Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Welcome back. We're not Captain of Industry, but Eco. Uh, we started a new community server, Caladorn and I did, uh, on Sunday? I think it was. And uh, I've been playing on it a little bit over the last two days or so. And uh, I wanted to, you know, bring it into the stream and share it with everyone as uh, where I'm at and what's going on and, um, uh, you know, what what's what the server looks like so far and invite anyone who's watching to uh, to to join us if you'd like if you'd like to play if you enjoy playing eco or if you want to give it a try um i'm sure it'll be on sale for the winter sale for the steam winter sale and we're still gonna be going uh, eco servers can take a varying amount of time but uh, usually at least a couple of weeks um so uh if you even if you join a few days late you're not missing you're not missing out you can still jump in and participate pretty well so Without uh, further on that, let's just go ahead and jump in and uh, take a look around. So I'm here in my um, in my base, in my house slash shop that I have that I've built so far. I have a two room house attached to my one room shop, and I'm getting pushed by a fox. Thank you, fox. Um, I uh, I have built. Um, I'll climb up here on the roof. I moved my uh, some of my stockpiles and my tent up here on the roof, which is the building you start with is your camping tent. And uh, you can kind of look around here. Um, I'm supposed to make fun of you and your spelling, Ontario. Can do, can do. Ontario is in the uh, in the Discord chat. We are using the Discord link mod, and it's linked to Caladorn's Discord. So um, he's kind of the he's hosting the server itself, and uh, so he's kind of the uh, the primary uh, host of the community server. Although I am sharing in some of those responsibilities, and bird just flew at me. There are bugs in the game. If you are a a, uh, a person who is affected by bugs, specifically spiders, there is even an arachnophobia mode uh, that you can turn on. You can click to um, turn off the spiders, hide the spiders. They're still there. They can still do things. They're still the sign of the um, uh, of of the health of the of the area you're in. But um, um, you are, um, but they're still here. You just don't see them. Hey, Peps, welcome. You don't get the game, especially playing. Against, yeah, single player is a bit challenging to do with this game. It was easier a couple of major versions ago, back in uh, 0 0.7 when we started. There's just so much to do now that um, it's very, 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 very involved to accomplish in single player. It's not hard. It's just, it's a little bit, over overbearing i guess in single player it's still doable um i haven't completely done it in 0 0.9 at all um i might have done it once in 0 0.8 but i don't even think i finished it on my own since 0 0.7 just because it gets it gets tedious after a while too you have to do a lot of mining um a lot of tree chopping a lot of things in order to get that far so um the threat of Bob, yeah. Well, in single player, you really want to have it set at the very, very uh, easiest difficulty, and you also um, either turn off the meteor or you want to make sure that you are pausing your game, uh, whichever, depending on where you're playing it. Um, you're pausing your game before you um, uh when you exit, when you exit, if you're just playing truly single player, where the where the game is hosted by uh, the server is part of the client, then it turns off automatically when you exit the save. Otherwise, if you're running a separate server um, instance, then you're going to want to probably stop it every time that you uh, every time you finish up. But you can also use the sleep function in the game in um, in single player. Most servers won't let you do it. Um, where you can skip through uh, a bunch of time, specifically the nights, or just through a bunch of time when you're when you're uh, waiting on stuff, especially early on in the game. Uh, you're waiting on skill points or something like that to happen, uh, or a bunch of crafting or something like that. But really, if you're at that point, mine some more or chop some more trees. You're better off then. So let's go have a fly around here and, and take a peek at some people's properties. Um, I didn't specifically ask if anybody minded if I showed off their properties as they are now on stream, but I mean they are on a visible community server, so um, they, they're not really private per se. So uh, this time, for the first time in several of our community servers, we have started with a fixed 
Oh, you're coming. All right, I'll come back, Ontario. No worries. Um, uh, hey, Raven, welcome. Uh, we started with a fixed currency. And what that requires is that we build a, a bank building and put a couple of buildings or a couple of tables in said bank. Um, one of those is a mint. One of those is a, where's it at? A bank. And this allows you to control uh, your own accounts and accounts that you have management rights on. And then also uh, we, we provide some money for initial starting of everyone uh, using a, a voucher. And so this, um, this, this bank will purchase those vouchers that, that are spawned inside of your inventory at the start of the game uh, and give you a thousand coins in return. And there's two stores here just for balance and fun. Um, I also, just to kind of decorate the bank a little bit more, I put in some of these uh, real estate desks, which are useful if uh, you need to manage some of your deeds or if you need to sell any deeds for any reason. Um, you can manage your properties and things in here. Hey, Joe, welcome. Thanks for the hydrate. Let's do that. So um, any of the players can come over here too and use these real estate desks. Or at least I think they can. I might actually need to change their permissions on them. I think they can they can justice. consume them. Indeed, justice. Um, so that's the uh, that's the bank, and it is in the shape of Caladorn's uh, favorite symbol, the um, the icon that he had done uh, in honor of the game Dishonored, and uh, it's it is the um, uh, the heretic brand in Dishonored. There it is, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, Raven, I, I think I will stream it at least once a week. Uh, depends on what's going on, uh, what I've got going on, as well as I do still want to try to finish up Captain of Industry at some point. So I don't want to leave Captain of Industry just stagnant for this time, but um, I, I do plan on streaming um, Eco at least some. Um, but yeah, so it's the Bank of Heresy. All right, so uh, flying around some... Oh, we need to go back home. Uh, let's go back home. And I'm using um, admin command to fly, of course. You ran back? Okay, I'll come find you. I don't remember where you are, actually. There's there's Kale Turner. Uh, there's Joe. There's Ontario. Okay. Let's go up this way. So we'll fly past. I don't remember who's this on the same island as me. Uh, this is, we fly over it and we'll find out. Uh, this is T one of TZ Girl's properties. TZ is, uh, farming. So she has quite a few properties. This is her main one where her home and whatever, uh, storage she wants to have is at. And then I think she's got a bunch of other properties scattered throughout this island that we share. As well as, um, that's lovely Santa's, uh, property down there. I, I'm pretty sure she has properties on other Isle Islands too. Little little plots like this, where um, she's doing some different kinds of farming, uh, farming of different kinds of goods. Um, you can see here she's got tomatoes planted here because this is, happens to be a good area to harvest or to grow uh, tomatoes, which the game uh, will show you. Uh, let's see, it's in plant group, uh, plant uh, yield potential, and then you find uh, tomatoes. Tomato yield potential. You can see this is a real hot spot. White is the best. Um, actually, it gets almost blue in one, in certain spots, and that's how you know that's actually the best the best area to plant that type of crop in. And so every every type of plant crop, whatever in the game is um, is is given over to this this sort of heat map system where you can plant different things in different areas, and that also includes. Um, uh, trees and it includes animals so you can you can see in the game exactly i should turn that off because that's annoying uh you can see in the game um where exactly you want to plant things at to get the best yield from them and in some places they simply just won't grow so keep that in mind as well uh, let's see um and there's a ridiculous amount of, of animals running around on our, our island here we also uh speaking of this island we also did a bit of customization to the world generator uh, so that we can have all these different uh, islands. Let's go into 2D. There we are. So we can have all these different islands uh, rather than it's usually like like two or three large land masses and a couple of tiny islands like this size. Um, instead, we have, I think, 14 um, or 12, maybe. I think it's, maybe it's 12 uh, uh, large-ish islands, but they're not... Um, they're not 
fully, you know, the full continental size. They're just, and I love how you can see this on the map too, by the way. Uh, they're not the full, uh, you know, the full continent size. They're, they're kind of like archipelago kind of a thing going on here. So you can kind of see how that, uh, how that played out. And then we also made some of the cliffs a little bit steeper. So it makes it a little bit harder to traverse, but it also still gives us some decent uh, mountain heights even though uh, we are starting off on islands and the way that World Generator works and things like that. So this is Ontario Gardener's uh, base slash home. Uh, he is doing mining and masonry for now. I don't know where his plans are after that, but I think you're doing... Uh, your mine must be underneath... Must be digging around underneath. Oh, there it is, right there. Uh, you mine down into the mountain, and, you know, this mountain will yield... Um, Probably a lot of limestone, some some uh, sandstone for sure, maybe some granite on the stone side. On the ore side, you'll probably find some, um, some iron at some point. And if you head up into here, you might find some copper or some gold. And up here, you might find some gold as well. So uh, depending on what biome it is, is what uh, ores spawn. And they spawn at different heights, elevations in the... Uh, in the strata, uh, the zero block height is is bedrock is is impenetrable, and then you know from here we're at 60 at sea level, and then um, you know the mountains go up to 100 or so I think the tallest one which is where the uh, or one of the tallest ones at least where the bank is is at about 100 I think, and then you go from there. Uh, let's see here we have over here someone doing something that requires power. Uh, this is um, this is Eun's property. Yeah, Lakeside Food, Eun's property. He's one of my, uh, he's I think my only other competitor, Cook. Uh, we're both doing campfire cooking right now. Uh, you kind of have to start out with campfire cooking, and then you can advance, uh, at least at the beginning of the server, and then you can advance into baking and cooking, uh, uh, like in, in, in a kitchen at a, on a stove. Uh, after that, and we haven't gotten there yet as a as a server. Like I said, we're still in the Stone Age, pretty much. Uh, growing some uh, some some beans over here, though, on his own, and then back here must just still be some of his other properties. And um, I know that was Fire Racer has a bit of a plot here uh, for something. Okay, um, over here is uh, rice field that um, that Yoon has. Up here we have Mamode. Okay, let's fly up there to Mamode's property. There we are. Mamode is uh Antares playing hide and seek and reverse. <laughs> Alright, so we have um Mamode digging in the ground here. It looks like doing mining as well. Uh, I think I thought was doing tailoring maybe just made this uh made this underground building for for the fun of it but looks like they're doing tailoring um let's see and then uh where do we want to go next Should come over here i think this is on alana yeah this is on alana go that way but yeah so right now all of our buildings are either hewn uh, hewn logs or uh, mortared stone. Uh, we don't really have any other options besides those two. Uh, Lana is building up. There's a bunch of uh, looks like limestone, which would be good to uh, to save and sell later. Limestone is is I mean it's it's very plentiful, but it's also in very high demand at different stages of the game, so it's kind of useful. Uh, Lana is doing farming as well, so she has set herself up here with. Um, with some farming here in, in this grassland area, and then uh, I'm assuming he has farms scattered all over the world as well. Uh, let's see, let's go west again. And over here we have Derpumu, uh, who I can't remember what he was working on. Um, we can find out, I guess. Nothing. Nothing in there. Maybe not. Uh, just started a uh, new player, actually. Uh, just started, just joined us recently. Um, maybe doing some, must be doing some mining. I'm not sure what's after that. I think maybe I saw engineering in the in the chat. Here in the desert, uh, iron is very plentiful. 
So that's a, if you're going to go smelting um, and you want to do iron smelting, the desert is a very high chance of getting a lot of iron. So that's a good choice. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what their plan is or not. I don't remember. Uh, here's somebody who's done an awful lot of work. A lot of mining, a lot of creative stacking of stockpiles here. Um, you can do a lot of craziness with uh, the stacking of things in this game because it is... Um, the physics are very forgiving. That looks like almost an entrance, but it's not. Uh, so this is a, a Plispomatox. I think that's how you say their name. Um, has a combination of things. I think I saw... Might have been doing engineering or something. Something like that. I can't remember now. I'm bad with memories. Uh, and this, I think, is Nirena. No, this is Plispomatox as well. Uh, excavating and mining up here. Um, looking for other things. Oh, you've let a little bit of the water in. The water physics in this game is a little bit um, derpy, to put it mildly. Um, water will flow only for a few number, a few blocks, and then it magically disappears, uh, unless there's another block to cause it to flow further. So uh, you can be very, um, it's very, it's very derpy, very forgiving too, though. So if you accidentally flood something, all you have to do is block it off, and then it's magically. Um, it's magically fixed. Okay, this leads back to um, to my land. and But if we come over here, we can see what's over here. I think that might be Og. Uh, northeast, this way. There's a compass down in the bottom, uh, bottom right, kind of next to my head. Built a... Uh, uh, so there's one thing that's weird with this game. I, well, one thing weird. You can't stamp dirt roads in the desert. They will... Un, they become un, un roads and you can't stamp dirt roads in the sand so one of the sort of cheats that people do is use other mortared stone or uh hewn uh logs like this to make a little path slash road so they can get through these biomes quicker because if you're walking on the ground uh you will um if you're walking on the ground you will have uh, a harder time moving around so you want to work on roads as much as you can this is Og's building, as you can kind of tell from the uh, from the uh, uh, thing there, and at least did close off his mine. Uh, good. So he he's away for a couple of days. So uh, he he wanted to protect his uh, his his efforts here, and so um, uh, has has kind of protected his land there a little bit. I see someone else up here on the mountain at the top. Oh boy, that's going to be a, a fun one to get to and fro. Wait, what's up here? Uh, the Holy Mountain. <laughs> this is also Agrimskar. He has claimed this mountain. I suspect he's hoping to find some uh, copper or gold on the bottom of the mountain or down in the mountain someplace. So uh, good luck with that one, my friend. And then here we have... Um, Avalarian, uh, who apparently is uh, mining and cutting wood. I don't see a camp, though. But this could also not be home, or they could have moved their camp. Oh, there's a campsite. Uh, so they're doing some mining here in the Granite Mountain as well as chopping down trees. I wonder if they destroyed a whole redwood. A whole great redwood. These are kind of cool. Um, they only grow at the beginning like they spawn with the server and then you you can chop them down they take like a hundred hits with the with the stone axe uh unskilled and uh once you fell them they will never regrow uh, it takes another hundred hits to remove the stump so uh be prepared for that one but that could have just been regular redwood trees too because they they yield the same wood whether you chop down one of these giant redwoods or just one of these regular redwoods like that so there's that, and uh, let's see who else we have. Who else, who else, who else? There's where I am again. Did we come up here? We did not. Okay, let's go northwest from here. Northwest, there we are. Oh yes, I have a couple of those pinned because I've been up here recently. Uh, I have the stores pinned, so here's Kalebian's place. Uh, Kalebian is a uh, carpenter. Uh, I know that because I've been here to buy furniture. Um, and uh, is, of course, chopping down trees to make things out of wood, as carpenters do. And I bought some furniture. I should probably buy some more. Maybe buy some more furniture. And over here we have a Hardy Hill, which is 
Cosolito's place. I think they're kind of working together in a bit. Um, but I can't remember what Cosolito's doing. Does Cosolito have a store? Apparently not. They might be just be working together. I can't remember. And then over here we have... Oh, no, wait, this is Cosolito. This is Cosolito's place. Wait, that much? Oh, yes, okay, you have it stretched super thin. So Cosolito is the butcher. And I don't remember what else, um, but I came up here to buy meat. Because I'm a cook, and I need meat to cook. And I see Ontario needs meat to eat. Uh, he's typing it into the chat. Uh, there's a couple more. Did I already just go to this one? Well, that was Ontario. Uh, is there a couple more? Or is that it? That's Lana. That might be it. We go to all the islands. So there's not a huge number of us playing. We're we, like I said, the server is open to anybody in our communities or anybody who joins our Discord servers. Um, if you're interested, I can I actually could do it anyway. Um, this is my Discord, uh, but like I said, the uh, chat is held in. Caledorn's Discord, which might be that command or might just be this command. There we are. Um, as well as his Twitch, of course. Uh, but, um, so, yeah, so we have, we have quite a few people. I missed somebody over here. Did I do this one at all? I'm going to miss this one totally. Land of Opportunity is... Oh, Joe, we didn't come up and do yours. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, and oh, that's why, because I went that way and I went... Yep, 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 yep. Now, let's see, where am I at again? I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm here. Okay, let's go west. West. Go west, young man. You played about ten minutes? Yeah, then you barely got started. It takes about that long to do the uh to do the demo. There's Joe down here uh chopping a tree he felled in the uh yep. And uh let's see, we have what are you up to today? What are you up to, Joe? Don't know anything. Uh, so, uh, you're just selling. Looks like you're going toward carpentry, possibly. Looks like you're selling. Oh, you said you were selling stuff you picked up and you didn't need or you didn't like to eat. Uh, those types of things. That's right. All right. I think that was the last one. Uh, wait. Whoever's over here too? We didn't get. Do do. do. Eris. Ah, yes. Eris. Chris is here in the in the uh, in the middle of the in the middle of the rainforest, and it looks like she's chopping trees and doing some stuff. So, but I suspect she'll end up mining before too long, because Eris tends to dig holes and make huge things. So, uh, let's see. I think that's everybody now. I apologize if I missed anybody who might be watching or might see this later. Um, and I've forgotten where I have to go to go home. Uh, let's see. There's that tag. There's that one. Ah, there we are. Okay, so let's fly back home, and then we can, uh, and then we can stop using the, uh, the cheating here. All right. So, uh, the basics of the game is you, if you're playing in a group, which you really should be, then you're kind of going to start out doing one of a few things. Uh, you're going to start out chopping trees, or one or one or more of a few things. Uh, you're probably going to end up doing a little bit of everything to start with, and then you kind of specialize a little. You'll probably start out either chopping trees, uh, mining rock, or um, picking up, picking plants. Uh, those are kind of three of the gathering professions. There's also, um, there's also hunting. So if, if you need to do some hunting, then, well, come over here and, um, and you know, shoot some critters. Yeah. And then once you get beyond that, then you're going to want to specialize in one of those things, usually. Especially early in the game. That's kind of all you have available to you is those types of things. Uh, other than that, there's cooking. Um, you can pretty quickly uh, research and start doing things like uh, carpentry, as I mentioned, or masonry. Um, carpenters can can specialize in making um, in, in making things out of wood, obviously, um, and then eventually they can start making lumber, which is like the second tier of wood. Uh, masons specialize in making the the uh, the mortared stone, and uh, can also make several decorations. Um, 
and and whatnot. Um, uh, you can make the different mortar stone in the different colors. Right now, the only mortar stone that everybody can make is the sort of grayish one, the the blue gray color. Um, once you've specialized into masonry, you can make sandstone orange. Uh, you can make this more gray of uh, using granite, that color of gray. Uh, this is just the granite rocks, but you can make mortar stone that looks like it. And you can also make mortared limestone uh, that has the whitish look of limestone. Um, and then everyone can also cook at a campfire and they can make uh, pretty much everything that starts with the word campfire, as well as everything that makes that starts with the word charred. Uh, and then maybe one or two other things too. But most of this stuff comes from uh, the, uh, the actual campfire profession, which is uh, campfire cooking. Um, and then you get, uh, a bunch of other things like, um, wait, campfire animal. No, you get those. Never mind. All of these things you get, which is a bunch of charred and, and like just burned food on the fire. And then you actually are able to make, uh, things like salads. Uh, you can char sausage, which you can't do as a basic. You can make this campfire roast and you can make, uh, fried foods at the, um, at the fire you can make these different stews there are six different stews you can make so there's a lot of choice you can make once you get there once you get this unlocked if you're cho choosing to go into cooking um otherwise um i think most other folks go into most folks go into one of those or uh carpentry or masonry right away uh, tailoring isn't too far off, usually from the start of the game. You can make a lot of things out of cloth, obviously, there. Uh, you're going to need some support from other professions to do tailoring, though, specifically the carpenter and a farmer uh, to do too much tailoring, so keep that in mind. Uh, everyone also starts out with this self-improvement self skill uh, that everybody gets when they start the game. Actually, I should take my skill here. Uh, do I want... Glutton or inventory size? I'm going to take glutton because I don't really need to carry that much inventory as a cook. So I'm going to take glutton. Uh, at level 3 and then again at level um, 6, you get a, a talent choice you can pick in every profession. So keep those in mind, including the self-improvement one. Um, smelting and advanced smelting are available as well. Smelting takes a little bit of work to get into, and I think you might need support from a mason in order to get it going. Uh, then, of course, there's masonry and mining, and then there's other stone-based um, skills here that we'll pick up along the way. In addition to hunting, there's butchery. Uh, so you can actually, instead of just taking those carcasses, dumping them on... Oops, I didn't want to do that. Dumping them on the fire and uh, charring them, uh, This camp, these campfire animal recipes, you can then uh, carve up the, the corpses and the carcasses and... Um, Turn them into uh, meat that can then be used for other things. You need uh, you need processed meat for the stews, for example, and you also need uh, fat. And one of the early sources of fat is tallow, which comes from the butchery profession as well, uh, as a byproduct of processing the largest of the animals, um, um, the bison and the something else, as I think, right. Or am I misremembering that? I might be misremembering that. I thought there was a there was a butchery recipe that got you some side product of of tallow, but I know you can make it as a um, as a cook. You can render uh, scrap meat to make tallow. Bison is correct. Okay, I thought it came maybe from the large animals too, the medium animals too, but maybe I'm misremembering. It's been a while. New players, I would say, either do carpentry or masonry. Go go down the, the logging or the stone mining route. Um, they're kind of the most straightforward. If you're a cook, you kind of have to keep up on it. And um, and if you if you go down the ga gathering's not that hard either. Gathering it into farming. Um, because you just go around and gather different plants. Like, I can pick up this pumpkin right here. Like that. And I just harvested it. Now, I didn't harvest it the most efficiently. I just picked up 
a pumpkin from that. Um, if you have the gathering skill, then uh, you can start getting uh, bonuses for how much of each uh, how much each pick will get you. So you can see this increases yield harvest yield by forty percent at level one, and then level two and so on will give you even more. Uh, it gets you to fifty percent. It gets you to sixty, seventy, eighty. 90%, 100% at level 7, so you can you can get more and more yield from picking up plants than a non-skilled person can. And then that leads you into uh, the rest of its tree, which is farming, which gets you uh, the ability to make seeds so that you can plant more seeds than you can get just by picking up plants. Uh, and then you can get into milling, uh, which uh, lets you turn a lot of... Uh, you can turn... Um, you can turn plants into these different things. One of the most useful ones early on is sunflower oil, because as I was talking about with tallow, tallow is a bit hard to, to obtain, but uh, sunflower oil is relatively easy. You just get some sunflowers and grind them up. So it's kind of an early, early good one. And there's a few others here like flour and sugar that are used a lot later. So uh, cornmeal, uh, not as much, but um, flour especially. Uh, you, if you if you go into milling, you will make a lot of flour eventually. And then you can also do fertilizers, which means it gives you the ability to adjust the um, the uh, the nutrition level, the nutrient levels in the soil, and then that gives you the ability to plant stuff where it otherwise couldn't be planted. But that's kind of the ending of, the end of that sort of tree. Uh, and then there's the engineering tree that starts out with basic engineering, uh, road working mainly, as well as um, uh, simple mechanical power, water wheels and windmills. We saw some scattered around as we flew around. Uh, we're just now kind of getting into that stage of the game uh, right now. And then that leads into these other, um, these other uh, engineering professions um, later in the game. They're kind of like... Uh, third and fourth tier in the game you kind of do basic engineering and then you skip like a whole tier and then you get into these which is kind of have a funny kind of thing but that's the way that it works there's a lot of cooking stuff that comes later uh there's cooking and baking and then advanced cooking and baking cutting edge cooking is useless uh there's nothing really in it that has any benefit to the game at all and then of course the carpentry tree which i think we kind of started with but then you get into paper milling which is semi-useless it's only really used for one thing and then there's uh, composites that is like advanced lumber working, like really fancy looking uh, walls and things, furniture. All right, so after all of that, um, I'm gonna, I'm, so I, right now I have both uh, logging and uh, campfire cooking. I took the logging so that I could be a little more efficient on uh, building my, my house and building here, as well as I thought maybe if I felt like it, they gave me some additional, are you dead? No, you're just sleeping. Okay. Uh, additional um, income if I wanted it. I haven't bothered with that aspect of it yet. But what I need to do is plant some tree seeds. I have a metric ton of tree seeds from all the trees that I've knocked down to build what I have built. I have like almost 90 birch and 90 cedar seeds. So I'm going to grab those and uh, plant some of those and put this pumpkin in there. Oh, okay. Uh, let me that goes there. I also should probably check my food stocks here to see if I should make some food before we start. I could make some more beet campfire salads, maybe some more jungle campfire salads. I saw Ontario was fishing for meat, but I don't think I have any. I had to go buy some, I think. No, I have 39 charred meat. I don't know what he's complaining about. Um, I don't. Ha we don't have any of these available on the market. So I can't make those. And... Um, Charred cactus fruit, I only had the, that many. I don't think I have any more. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we can make some more beet campfire salad and jungle campfire salads. And go from there, see what happens. Okay, so ironically, you make these salads at a fire. Uh, don't read too far into it. That's just the way that it works. Let's make 30 of each beet campfire salad and jungle campfire salad. This is like a fruit salad kind of thing. It's got papayas and pineapples. And any of these four greens, you can see here in the tooltip, uh, any of these four greens will work. 
Uh, it'll just pull them from my inventory, uh, top to bottom, left to right. So it's going to pull... Uh, for the greens, I think it's going to pull the agave greens. The agave leaves. Because those are first of these four. Beet, greens, fiddleheads, and fireweeds. We don't have any fireweeds, so yeah, that's what it's going to pull first. And then the other one is um, one beet, one fruit, and one green. So if I come back in here, I have, I have pumpkin, which is fruit. It's technically a fruit horticulturally a fruit in real life, but it's in this game it's classified as a fruit specifically. I also have huckleberries uh, that are a fruit and uh, prickly pear fruit. And then I have papaya and pineapple. All of those are fruits. There might be more fruits. If you mouse, the cool thing with this game is these tooltips are all... Um, They, you can drill down on them. So if I mouse over the pineapple, for example, I can see these four tags here that this uh, that these that this item belongs to. They belong to the crop tag, which has 27 items in it. Uh, these four plus 23 more. It belongs to. I'm gonna skip the fruit tag for a minute. The raw food tag, which has these four plus 19 more in it, and it belongs into the fruit, which has those four plus 206 more. In the food tag. In the fruit tag, it tells us what all counts as fruit. Uh, these four plus two more items, so there's just six there's six different fruits in the game. Giant cactus fruit and and huckleberries, pineapple, pop, papaya pineapple, prickly pear fruit, and pumpkin. All of those count as fruit. So anything that calls for this generic fruit tag, like this, this anything in gray is a generic tag. Anything that counts as, as fruit tag. Um, will work in this recipe, and the, like I said, the uh, the system kind of just takes top to bottom, left to right, unless you disable a, a stockpile for crafting input by clicking this button like that. So um, that's kind of the, the gist of how crafting works, and that crafting, this concept of crafting works at any crafting table. Um, oop, there's a dead agouti. Uh, there's... Um, here at the carpenter table, I'm only a hew, uh, or logging, I'm not a carpenter, but I can make hewn logs here at the carpenter table, as well as basic upgrades one. Uh, and you can see here that this is a generic wood tag. There are ten different types of wood in the game. Uh, all of those scattered around the world in different biomes, and all of them worked for making hewn logs. And then uh, basic upgrade is a way to make your tables more efficient by 10%. There are five tiers of upgrades, and they have an increasing percentage up to 50. Um, they're scaled, though, so it's like 10, 25, 40, 45, 50, so that you get most of your benefit from the middle, um, and then it, it kind of tapers off fast. Okay, so uh, with that agouti, I could either sell that, which maybe I should. Yeah, let's sell that. Uh... A Gucci carcass. I don't know how much to sell it for, though. It can be sold at uh, the butchery shop for one her uh, coin. So I'm just going to sell it here. Or buy, sorry. It can be sold at. So I'm going to sell it here for one coin. Um, the, the idea being that, hey, if somebody wants to come and pick it up, then they can make 10 cents off of it by t picking it up and taking it over there. So, uh, back to what I was doing, which was planting trees. You need to make yourself a hoe um, for any planting any seeds, and you do that at the tool bench. The tool bench is made at the workbench. Uh, also can be made at the tent, and the workbench is also made at the tent initially. So your tent can make, like, three things. The campfire, the tool bench, and the carpenter, or the crafting bench. The generic crafting bench. I'm gonna leave uh, one, two, three spaces, I think. And I'm just gonna do some of this. Get out of the way, freaking cheetah. Now, you could hoe the whole line, but that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be a bit, uh, Expensive as far as the hoe works. It has, um... <laughs> I 
<laughs> hey, Coyote Nightmare, welcome. Uh, Coyote Nightmare is um, is Kale Turner in game, and uh, so in case you're reading the chat down there, uh, you'll find coal also, guys, in the uh, in the grasslands. Um, I need uh, meat to make meaty stew. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at that again. I need scrap meat, I think, and tallow. Meaty stew. That's my big... Tallow's the big problem right now. I have five whole tallow. Uh, so I can make five of these, but I would want to make ten at least. And then I could use... So what the cool thing is, is this looks like it costs one tallow. But because of that ten percent module... If I said I wanted to make ten of these, uh, instead of it taking... Uh, 20 meat and uh, um, 10 scrap meat and 10 tallow it only takes 18 charred meat 9 scrap meat and 9 tallow um, I actually have the meat parts I just need the tallow uh, Joe I'll set up uh, I'll set up a, a build order for that hey psycho welcome I'll set up a crafting order how much how much uh, tallow do you have Joe I'll set up a crafting order for that if you want a bunch of meaty stew. I'll just I'll start with twenty, and we can always make more. Uh, that'll take eighteen tallow to make. I'm making a bunch of salads right now, but uh, that'll that'll come up in a little bit. Uh, so back to this. Uh, if you get a little tree like this, you can just whack it. They seem to like to pop up ridiculously. That's uh, not either one. Okay, that's fine. Oh, that might be a, a bush. It was okay. There, it's gone now. Okay, no worries. I just set, I set up some, and if we, if we get if you bring more, I can do more. I can also do some other of the stews then. If you also if you have more, uh, more tallow. Uh, tallow is is, like I said, in kind of tight supply right now, but. Um, hopefully we can we can get a little bit more going. And once they get uh, sunflower oil and, and that working, that'll be even better. I'll leave that one there. It's in the right spot. So once you hold a bunch of plots. Then you just go around with your seeds, and you just right-click. You select them in your toolbar like I just did. And then you just right-click, and... Okay. Oh, I forgot about this. Can I plant within four meters of another tree? You have to do make them further apart now. They changed this. That's right, I forgot all about it. Uh, so that means I won't even be able to plant one here. I'll have to plant it way back here. It will yell at me again. Yeah. Okay, well then, never mind. I'll put these a little further apart then. They changed it. So you have to uh, you have to space them out a little bit more, which is not a bad deal. Uh, that's going to complain because of this one being here. Should I? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, let's put it now in there, and then here. Then we have them all the same. Uh, cedar is 3.6 meters southwest. Oh, you. Okay. Well then, uh, let's go. The cow we can't do here, right? Uh, we could do here if I had hoed this plot. So, tree groves are going to take up a bit more space than they used to. Uh, I used to be able to actually plant the trees two meters south. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm here. Oops. Uh, yep, 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 yep. It's going to take some getting used to. You used to be able to plant the trees right next to each other if you wanted to. Yep. You could. So, they, they changed it. It's a good change. I mean, it's a more realistic change. You don't want trees in real life planted that close to each other. So, um, the only problem is now i got all these freaking hoed up plots that I can't use, but I am buying tallow. Yes, please. Uh, I have a hundred on order, I think, or maybe not that many, but I have some on order. Um, I have a sp I have space for 47, 46 more. I'm buying 50. If you have a lot, I will buy a lot. It's, it's expensive, but um, I should do the math on the meaty stew then, too. Uh, let's look at the meaty stew recipe again. I guess I should use the other, the other thingy. Um, ET stew. So it needs 
it needs 1.8 charred meat and um, 0.9 scrap meat, 0.9 tallow. So I'm paying, or I'm selling rather, my charred meat for 0.53 right now. So I bust out my calculator. 0.53 times 1.8 plus, and then I'm buying the scrap meat for 0.18 each times 0.9 plus, and then I'm buying the tallow for 0.7 because it's hard to get, so I'm paying more for it now. I may change that eventually, but for right now, that's what it is. So I just did the math on that, and then I gave myself a little bit of a profit margin, and I'm gonna charge 210 for meaty stew. Add stew, meaty stew, submit, and I'm gonna charge 210 for that. The, the store here will allow me to uh, group things into different categories. So I have miscellaneous stuff here at the top. Joe, if you want to buy that agouti, you can have it. Uh, I don't know if you're actually... You're not butchering, though. You're just hunting. Never mind. Um, and then I can I can group things by these different tiers if I'd like, if I like to. And then I can set the price for an item, how much I want to keep, like, that the store doesn't uh, try to sell. And then the game has this new freshness, freshness mechanic now. Uh, ah, thank you. Um, it has this new freshness me mechanic now where um, food will spoil over time. So you want to not have too much food in your inventory because it will spoil. And in fact, if I look through my inventory here, you can see now that some of the stuff is down right around half uh, freshness. So you got to be careful with that, that you don't buy too much and you don't cook too much as a cook either. That you, Because you, you don't want it to be laying around and, and not get eaten. And carcasses don't spoil. Uh, there's also a cool mechanic they added recently. Um, where you, um, you... You've always had this balanced diet bonus. You can see here in this tooltip. Where if you if these four numbers are equal, or as close to equal as possible, you'll get a bonus for... Depending on how close they are to being equal. And then you also get a bonus for eating a variety of foods... And then you also get a bonus for eating foods that you think are tasty. So, uh, for example, if I go here and I look at char charred meat, it says that you find this food tastes bad, but you have not eaten this food lately. And it also tells you the shelf life here and how much time it has till it spoils. Uh, charred sausage, I've never tried that before. I should try a charred sausage and see if I like it. And it's, I think that it tastes bad as well. Apparently, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, wilted fiddleheads, though, I don't like those either. Uh, Charred corn, I find that that tastes okay. So I could eat charred corn. Uh, while it doesn't give me that that bonus uh, for tastiness, it does help with my variety bonus. We went up from 8% to 10% after eating those couple of foods. So this one also tastes okay. Uh, I should make some more of that, though. Top porridge. Oh, we do have some more top porridge. Oh. Uh, if you merge stacks together like that, then, yep. Um, then uh, you it can um, it kind of merges the shelf life. So if you have stuff that's getting really old and you made a bunch of stuff that's new, you can merge those like that to make some of it have a uh, newer shelf life. Um, yeah, they, so when you spawn into the server, it randomly assigns a handful of foods that you like. Uh, at different, it divides the foods into these different uh, taste categories for you uh, randomly. So um, You'll find stuff that you like that is okay. You'll find stuff that you like that is good. You'll find stuff that you like that, that you think is bad, and so on. And you get different bonuses for it for doing that. So let's see. I have I have had that. I haven't had char cactus fruit before. So if I try that, I think it tastes okay. Perfect. And I think it also does a certain percentage in each tier as well. So... Um, so you don't, like, all of your foods that you think taste good aren't all in campfire or aren't all in advanced baking so that you don't have uh, all the stuff you like early in the game and then you hate the rest of the stuff or vice versa. They think they have it balanced so that you get a certain amount of campfire foods, a certain amount of this, a certain amount of that. Delicious. I find that charred heart of palm is delicious. Nice. Uh, I haven't tried charred papaya yet. Let's try that one. Delicious as well. Apparently, I am a frugitarian. How about charred uh, pineapple? 
That one's okay. Okay. Uh, charred agave. Delicious as well. <laughs> Delicious. Uh, I, I, uh, charred beans are good. That's good. Those are fruits as well, though. Beans are fruits. Beans are fruits. Topped porridge. That's okay. Uh, charred tomatoes are okay. Uh, charred taro. And taro is like a, a root vegetable. Um, I have not tried raw meat, no. Uh, or did I? I didn't try raw meat. Um, charred taro is delicious as well. That's like a root vegetable, kind of like a potato or a turnip, maybe. Um, and then there's these salads that I can make, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, there are four different salads. I th Two of them are good. One of them is okay. One of them is bad. Beans are a fruit. All, all legumes are fruits because they are the seed pod. Uh, they're the seed, the, the, the flesh of the, of the, um, the flesh of the plant that holds the seed. Um, so that makes them a fruit horticulturally. Now, food pyramid wise or, or uh, dietetically, they're considered a protein, but horticulturally they're considered a fruit, just like pumpkin is a fruit and all other squash for that matter. Oh, let's see. What are you guys up to? Sorry. I'm, I'm reading the chat, but I'm not really reading the chat. Okay. They're not talking to me, so that's fine. Um, so you can also do the same thing with raw food. Um, you're delicious as the fern salad. Nice. Uh, so you can try eating some of the different raw foods, too, and see if you like those. But the raw foods don't give you as much nutrition in the different, the four different nutrition categories, carbs, protein, fat, and vitamins, nor do they give you as much calories per item. So you want to cook the food when you can and try to eat the foods that you find delicious or at least okay. And then uh, you'll get a good balance, hopefully, if you, if you try to balance your four nutrition uh, groups, you'll get a good variety bonus and hopefully you'll get a good tastiness bonus. So that's kind of a fun thing with, with food this, this way. Um, now I'm stuck. Somehow I got stuck here. Uh, nope. Not what I wanted you to do. I'm stuck. Uh, slash unstuck. Nope. Slash unstuck. Spelled correctly this time. Well, throw me up on the roof because it just like throws you up so many tiles. Raw liver only. <laughs> uh, do I look like boss hog to you? Don't answer that. Uh, there's nine me meaty stews now, um, Joe. But I'm going to eat one to see what it tastes like. Actually, I can't. I don't have enough enough uh, room for it. So your stomach will also fill up. And that's symbolized by the size of the wheel here. Um, your stomach can hold only so many calories. And you have to do work to reduce it. So my stomach holds 4,250 calories. I'm at 3,508. So I could eat something worth just under 750 calories. Um, yeah. Yeah, and they've, you know, they've, they're still adding a lot of stuff to the game. Stupid trees, get out of here. They're still adding a lot of stuff to the game, so it's definitely a, a good game to return to every so often, which is why we do it. Um, just to kind of see what's new, what's different, what's going on. And, man, there's a lot of mushrooms growing over here. Um, I could plant some trees over here, though, I suppose. Um, and, and you know, just to play again, because there's a, there's a large number of us who, who enjoy this game a lot, so... So we do we do play it a lot. Um, the rest of this bit down here in the bottom left, uh, you can see it all below my chat box. These are the professions that I have and where I'm at skill level with them and where I'm at in the skill level advancement. And then also my character level as well is down here. How many skill points I earn per day and where I'm at in getting to the next level, which gives me another skill point, which lets me pick another profession. Uh, this is my total food score up here, by the way, 40.7. That's taking all four of those categories, all three of those bonuses, plus the base gain. And it gives me my nutrition multiplier, which goes toward how many of these skill points I get per day. And then also I have a housing meter here, because I do have those two house rooms here. One is a bedroom with a bed and a dresser. And the other is a toilet with a, a latrine and a chair because you need a chair in your bathroom for reasons, and a research table because this is where I do my best thinking. Um, let's see. And so that gives me um, some, some also some points 
that go toward how much experience points I earn per day, which goes towards how fast I level up. So if you haven't played with the housing system at all yet, they've, they've made changes since the last time we all played um, as, a, as a group, and they have different room categories now than they did then, but they also have a bunch of new furniture. But not only that, we also have a bunch of new furniture that the game doesn't normally have because we added in um, a bunch of item mods uh, from a pack called Elixir Mods. And uh, that has just a ton and ton and ton of different types of items in it. And um, kind of makes gives you a little more variety of what you can actually make. Like, for example, these, these chests here. Also, this, this log pile here and this stone pile here are all part of that mod. Now, I'm not as thrilled about the look of this stone pile here. And it looks kind of weird to me. But I like the idea. I like the way this log pile looks and works. Go away. Critter, crazy critters. And I like this this uh, storage chest, too. Um, and I don't know what else there is yet. that We haven't necessarily uncovered anything else new. But, yep. And there's Kale Turner again. Let's remove that. I'm going to keep the cotton bowls in here because I keep picking them up. When I run out, when I run into them, uh, let's see. I should make some meaty stews now too, uh, or some wild stews now. I mean, uh, let's see. This is bored. Good. Wild stew. Wild stew. Oh, I can't make wild stew yet. I put it in there to make it, and then I can't make it because it doesn't require tallow. But I don't have all the stuff. I need. I need. Uh, or I don't have the skill. I need. I need cooking six, and I'm at cooking five right now. So, um. So I need to make other stuff. We could do, uh, we could. Do, I I used all my all my uh, tallow. They sold me, so I can't. Um, I can't make more of that. I could render my own tallow, but it's expensive to render. It takes um, nine scrap meat to make one one tallow. So, mm, yeah, that's. That's a bit painful to do. That's that's a bit much. Um, so I think right now I'll just have to wait. Because yeah, I'm paying. What am I paying for scrap meat right now? Over here, I'm paying 18 cents for a scrap meat. So nine of those would be even without without profit margin. That's still a dollar sixty-two for um, for one tallow, and I'm I'm not I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. All right. So uh, so let's see. I, I planted some trees. I could make some more. Or do some more building. Maybe I want to, you know, build another room on my house or something like that. So I could come out here into the economy of Europe. Um, it allows you to see what other people have. Trades. I don't think I do, uh, Joe. I think I need more roasts. Yeah, I need, I need more raw roast. I should increase the buy on that. Uh, let's go up to 40 of those. Um... Uh, but yeah, I, I need I need roasts. So I need I need those from a butcher. Oh, you're gonna do it? Okay. Um, uh, uh, economy viewer. So here in the economy viewer, you can see what everyone else or everyone in the world has for sale. Yeah, lots more of the bulbs. Seven canvas bulbs, or seventeen canvas bulbs on you. Um. Um. How much canvas do I have cooked? I have 71 charred camas, so I don't think so. I think I probably have enough camas bulbs uh, right now. <laughs> the Arby's. Poor Ontario. He doesn't get Arby's anymore. Uh, so, yeah, let's look at the economy viewer. Uh, so this is everything that everybody in the world has for sale. Um, Avatar parts are clothing... Clothing for your character, 
Um, some of the clothing has benefits. Running shoes, for example, increase your running speed, or your movement speed, rather. Uh, there's also, like, camo pants that, um, that reduce the detection range of animals. You can't eat it? No. Yeah. I don't, I think, I think the charred canvas is one that I, that I actually like okay. Um, but I still can't eat that much of it. Um, let's see. Um, black items are anything that can be placed in the world, uh, like, in a black shape, uh, including things like logs and stone. Uh, food is food, of course. Uh, items are various other items that go in, that can go in your toolbar or in your in your inventory here. Whereas the black items are things that are carried in the carry slot here, which I don't know that I showed um, before. But there's other kind of generic items in the game. And then finally, uh, or next, the, there's skill scrolls, which are how you learn new professions. Uh, you can either research the book yourself, or uh, you can buy a scroll off of somebody who has researched a book, because all they do is just tear a page out and sell it to you. And then we have tools that we can buy. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody's selling soil samplers and road tools already. That's good, at least. Uh, I should go stop by TZ and buy a soil sampler. Yeah. Horrible is not good. Uh, basic upgrades, I should buy one of those, too. Basic upgrade twos, though. Oh, nobody has those. <laughs> Jeez, nobody has those for sale. And then world objects are things you can actually place out in the world. So that's like furniture, of course, as well as a bunch of other things. Um, and so maybe I want a... Um, I want another room, although the next room I think I could make would be the kitchen. So something like the icebox would be good for that. Uh, Kalebian is charging 25 for an icebox, so I could go buy an icebox from Kalebian, build another room out of my house, and then I would have a kitchen. It might be worthwhile. Um... Is she going to make me some doors, too, to keep the animals out of my house? <laughs> Let's see. Salt baskets are also good for decoration for the kitchen. The kitchen. Does it tell me how many room categories there are? Now, I think there's five. I can't remember what they all are. I was trying to look to see if there's any anything that's um, living room, but I don't see anything that's living room. You can also make a washboard. Mammoth's making washboards. Oh, four? Okay. Oh, there's a living room now instead of a general room. That's right. I'm trying to, to see, though, if there's any furniture anybody has that is uh, living room specific. And I don't see anything yet. I think that's when we get to, like, couch and things like that. <laughs> so I think we could go to um, we could go stop by Memo uh, or Kalibian's place, pick up a a uh, um, ice box. We could stop by TZ's place and pick up a salt basket. Maybe we could stop by Memo's place and pick up uh, uh, what should I call it? Um, See, there's Teasy. Libyan's way over here. And then there's, uh, there's Mamode. Uh, Teasy's and Mamode's pick up a washboard. And we could, we could, we could grow our, uh, our housing score, which could be useful. 
Uh, so I think we'll do that. And we'll build another room under the back of the house, too. So let's go let's go north to TZ's house first. I'm going to walk this time. I have plenty of food in my belly, so I shouldn't need to take food with me. We'll walk through her fields. You don't trample the fields. Like, you're not... I'm not doing damage to her fields or anything here. Uh, how do we get up to her... Ah, uh, here's a staircase. So I don't have to worry about, like, damaging her fields by walking through them or something. That, that, that's not a thing, which is good. Which is very good. Uh, let's see. Salt basket. Maybe we should buy a soil sampler, too. Soil samplers allow you to see how good, um... How good the soil is for planting something, but it also lets you see how um, I thought Calibians are there too. Yeah, uh, lets you see how good um, how close a tree is to being done. So um, if you are if you're really trying to make sure that uh, trees are fully grown before before harvesting them, then you're gonna want to do a um, you want to have a soil sample and make sure that they're fully, fully grown. The fish like to clip themselves up onto paths over the road for whatever crazy reason, and then they disappear after a while too. You can see how slowly I'm moving right now, um, because there's a, there's some drag on me. I thought it showed me the drag, but I guess it doesn't. Yeah, only felling trees can mess up a farm. But yeah, be careful with that, knocking down trees. It's not good if if you're not careful. Uh, you'll you can destroy a lot of stuff. You can even destroy other like young trees uh, by knocking down a tree. So you have to be really careful uh, knocking down trees. Over here to Calibians. And then, uh, what did I want from Galavian? Kitchen. Uh, the icebox. Of course, I'm spending all my money. And I'm not really making a whole lot of money. Um, but I also don't care that much. Um... I'm mostly just worried about playing the game, so I'm not that interested in necessarily maintaining or anything more than maintenance. And I've spent a lot uh, because of, you know, upgrading my house, and maybe I need to increase my profit margins a little bit because I'm, um, I'm not offsetting my expenses on. I'm not setting my expenses as much as I sh perhaps should be. So I could increase my profit margin a little bit on some things. I'm just gonna edit this a little bit here, put down the way I can get up here on this on this platform. Um, am I going to the right spot? No, I need to go that way. I'm going the wrong place. Wrong place. Wrong island entirely. So actually it's faster to swim than it is to walk across rough terrain. And it's, e it's even faster than, uh, and that's even faster rough terrain is than train with plants on it. Not this island either. We've got another one to go yet. No, oh, I guess I went the wrong way from Calibians. I should have gone the other way. Alright, let's see.
Uh, what was I getting here? Ah, washboard. You could buy a rug too, but I think I'm just going to buy the washboard. But you can buy this, these different clothing items too, and uh, some of them are just decorative. Some of them actually have some functionality to them. Uh, do I want a rug? They just add a little bit of uh, decoration value to some of your existing rooms. I think I'll just go with this for now and uh, save the rest of my money. Uh, that's, there it is, home. Actually, home would have been faster for me to go the other way. Um, because you saw it just popped up there. So, it actually would have been faster for me to go the other direction. Because the planet is round, even though it's not. And, like, finally you can see your own shadow now, too. For the longest time, you couldn't even see your own shadow. All you could see was the tool you were holding in your hand. And now they actually have, a, you have an avatar shadow. At least uh, TZ Girl Shop being up on a hill like that uh, is, is like a beacon <laughs> to see it, like a lighthouse. So let's use... Actually, I'm on the beach. I'm just going to stand down here. On the... Actually, I'm going to go back in the ocean because it's so much faster to swim through the ocean than it is to walk on. Sand and desert, uh, desert sand soil is um is the slowest it's kind of ridiculous uh because there's not as much vegetation or any vegetation uh in those places so this, the dirt is slower to walk on whereas the vegetation in the green greener biomes um uh cause you to slow down too i also want to finish this entryway thing here that i have going on okay so we're back uh, I can put down a couple of the pieces of furniture right now, specifically the uh, washboard, uh, which isn't that. Uh, let's see here. There we go. And then I can start working on another room that I want to attach to the back of the house. I think I'm going to need to chop down the pumpkin. Not that. Oops. Crap. Wrong button. Oh, well. Chop that down. Let's take this out. Those aren't harvestable yet. Okay. Rid of that tree there too. And let's chop down this this tree that's here. Pick what I can here before I before I knock this thing down. That's not harvestable. This one is. There we go. And you can also cut the grass too. Different uh, grass gives you different amounts of plant fiber. That was two plant fiber with unskilled harvesting of the regular sort of grass. Uh, there's one sort of there's one type of grass that's usually found near water, near near lakes and rivers, that's got like blue flowers in it. Uh, not not that purpley flower there, but like little blue flowers in it. And that one is the best yielding uh, plant, and it actually produces seeds too. So you can um, you can replant it, and you can grow. Uh, more of it, and if you are a gatherer, especially one who's interested in uh, uh, in in growing, getting, gathering plant fiber, then that's uh, that's your that's your bread and butter right there. Is those little blue flowers? So you can see that um, when I felled this tree, um, this was a young tree, so it's not going to give me very many logs. I should have done the soil sampler first. To show you, um, I will do that on the next tree. But you can see that it killed, it put all the stuff right here down to dirt. Uh, it actually will kill plants that are in the area of it. Um, usually around where the trunk was, but sometimes in, a, in directions too. But I only felled this tree because I wanted it moved. Otherwise, I shouldn't have knocked this one down yet because it was nowhere near uh, ready to harvest. It's only going to give me, uh, it looks like about 21 logs. Any room in here? Yes. Uh, that was 18. You can only carry up to 20 of these carryable items. And there was three more there. Um, and so that's 21. And that's full. So I think I have more logs in my generic stockpile right there. There we go. Okay. And then uh, I want my little wooden cart here. And I'm going to put that down... I like that they have the green hitboxes now, so you know exactly how big something is. 
That was a great improvement. Good job, guys, on that one. Make sure these aren't pickable. And then I want to use my shovel, which is a, a big shovel that uh, we have custom modded. Um, it allows you to dig up to 10 blocks of dirt or other diggables at the same time. And, um, and then you can... Uh, Um, and then you can dump it into a storage from there. Uh, the regular shovel in the game only allows you to dig one item from the ground at a time, but you can take up to 10 from a storage. So the big shovel basically just lets you have 10, whatever you want to have. So that was uh, four by five. I want to do another, another five here to get five by five, which is a good room size because of the size of the claim flags. Uh, the claim flags is how you claim land as yours. You get these claim, land claim papers. You start the game with effectively 10 of them. Uh, four of them will be put down with your camp. And then you can add, then you have six that you can put down from there. And you get five more each time you read one of those, uh, one of these scrolls to learn a new profession, uh, to learn how to accept a new profession, whether you actually take that profession or not. So I've read a couple of those scrolls. So I have a few extra papers. I think I've read three of them. And so I just claimed this piece of land right here. And actually, I can also E on the plot once I've claimed it. And I can set the color that I want of it. I should make this green because, well, I'm me. Uh, somewhere in that neighborhood looks good. And then um, you can also edit the plot using this tool here. So uh, you can see, you can also see people move around on the map. But I can add and remove squares to this plot. They have to be adjacent because this is my residence. Otherwise I could add them out here, but it'll, it'll complain. It'll yell at me if, when I, if I add them out here. So I don't want to add them out here. Um, but I can add more if I want, but I'm just going to add one right now because that's all that I'm adding to the game. And then I can submit it here and it'll also, um, it'll also edit and add or remove plots to the, to the claim. And then you can also set your residency at a plot. Uh, I technically have two plots right now because I own the bank. But um, this one's my residency. And then we have uh, what the property value of the plot is. And um, I don't know. I guess it just tells me how much XP I get based on the residency information here. I don't know what else the property value means, though. Uh, I haven't really looked at that. So that's uh, that's that. And then I need to, to grab some of this um, hewn... Hewn, these hewn logs that I have made, which I don't have very many made. I need to make some more, actually. I should have been doing that already. Uh, let's make, like, f 50 more at least. Or we need more. We're going to need more than that. Uh, let's do maybe more like 70. Um, I might need even more than that, but you can do that. Uh, the default is to make the hewn log be whatever the type of log that goes into it. So if you have... Logs that are classified as hardwood, which are those three, birch, seba, and oak, it'll make a hewn hardwood log. If you have uh, softwood, which are seba, fir, redwood, and spruce, then you can make softwood logs. And if you have any kind of logs, including the two that aren't included in those, uh, which are saguaro and joshua, uh, you make generic hewn logs. And you could always just override this and say, hey, I want to make one of these specific types of hewn logs by clicking this little uh, hammer icon here. After you've typed in your quantity, you hit the hammer icon, and then you can say, I just want to make generic hewn logs. I don't care. Use whatever logs are available. I don't care. And make them. And then you can apply work to the work order uh, either by clicking, clicking ads 100 at a time, uh, sh shift clicking, nope, control clicking, adds 500 at a time, uh, labor, and alt clicking adds all the labor. I always just alt click it, and that's fine. But that takes down the food, the calories you have, because you just did work. So then we need to go eat something. Uh, let's see, did I eat one of these yet? No, I didn't. Let's eat one of those. I find that meaty stew is delicious. It's 100 and, or 1100 calories. Uh, so that's pretty good, but I need to eat more fat, more protein, which that was. Uh, so maybe I should see another one of those. That'll give me a little more balanced, and that'll be better for me. All right, that's good. I'll, I'll stay right there for right now. So I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to do a couple things. I want to grab the, the hewn logs that are made and drop them here in my um, in my, my small wood cart. And I want to drop this dirt in that stockpile over there. 
and you can just drag and drop things. Shift click, shift click, drag to, to drag everything of that type. And then I that way this way I have um, a bunch of hewn logs that I can use to start doing some construction with. So we'll do that like this. Do, do, and I'm already done. That didn't take long. I could pick, pick these mushrooms too, but mushrooms are kind of somewhat useless in the game. Um, you can make charred mushrooms uh, right off the bat here. Uh, you can also use them in the research papers, which are kind of the best thing to use them in. Um, and then you can also use them in the uh, jungle campfire stew, uh, millionaire salad, uh, coquina specifically. Uh, mushroom medley uses three of the five different kinds of mushrooms. Ooh, what happened? Oh, I skilled up my uh, hewing to level four. And the pierogioc uh, recipe uh, also needs uh, some kind of mushrooms in it. So uh, mushrooms are used, but not by a lot. So I don't really need all the mushrooms that I have growing around here. So I'm not going to bother. The cotton was way more useful, although I should drop that in here so that it gets sold there. And I can also drop off the rest of this crap that I picked up. So that way it gets eaten or gets used in different things. This is a uh, seed. I should probably just sell my seeds. I'm really bad at doing that. A wood pulp you get from chopping down trees. And then we got a couple of plant fibers from, um, from the whatchamacallit there. I'm going to stash these chests to someplace. Uh, I'll put them in here with this stuff. I had made a bunch of chests and then I learned that I can make these, which are the modded item, but they also store more than twice as much as the chest. They take up this two, this, they take up two times the space as a chest, but they also store way more than, uh, or a bit more than twice as much. So they're worth it density wise. There we go. But by putting these in here, then I can just come over here with my hammer once I place these down and I can uh, swing my hammer at the cart like this. And I can pick up up to a whole stack uh, for hewn and mortared stone. It's 15 per stack. It just depends on the item, whether it's 15 or 20 or something else entirely. Um, let's do this and do that. And I'm out again already. It didn't take long. I totally should have set this up before I walked away. That was stupid. Oh, well. You live, you learn, you get loves. I also watched too much TV as a child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'll just move the bedroom back here and put the kitchen up front. Although, ironically, my kitchen is kind of the great outdoors because I have two campfires as my kitchen. Because <laughs> I'm a cook. Did somebody sell me the roasts? Joe did sell me the roasts. All right, I will make you some campfire roasts, Joe. Uh, let's see... I'll make 20 to each campfire, so they make twice as fast. In nine minutes, there will be 40 of them available. And I'll still have some left over because I'm saving 10% by switching to Geico. Let's see, one, two, I think I'm gonna take out one of these tiles like that. And then I can do something like this, except that I don't have more block. There. I don't have enough blocks. Ugh. I'm making 33 more. It's just, it just slow. You're deprived of TV, but not video games? Should also rename my property. It defaults depending on which, um, where you are, what biome you're in, and what, what whatever you're in. It will take your name and then add a suffix to it depending on the biome. So I should probably name this to something else. Uh, 
Uh, I, I named my store Tentacles and Other Tasty Treats uh, just to see if it could get a rise out of Caladorn. He hasn't noticed yet because he hasn't signed into the game yet. Uh, we're just going to call this uh, while he's home. Um, I'm, I'm lazy on that kind of thing. I'm also uncreative on that kind of thing. Let's see. You can go here. Uh, so with a, with a stone hammer... We can only do single point and line construction. As you get nicer and nicer hammers, uh, the next one is iron, then it's steel, and then it's modern. You get more forms or more fill types you can build in. I think there's six or eight of them total. Uh, but you do get access to, I think, all of the forms, regardless of which hammer you're using. So we can do cubes, we can do floors, we can do walls and windows, we can do we can do the, the easy roof, or we can do the custom roofs using uh, the rest of these tiles here. Um, actually, this is also a, um, an easy peak roof peak. Uh, we can do columns, we can do stairs and ladders, and we can do 45 degree walls, which is kind of an, which is a new thing, kind of fun. Um, actually, I think, or is that one of the mod? That might be the mod that has that. Uh, but we can make it like a 45 degree wall if we want to, uh, which is kind of fun. Actually, I haven't, actually, I haven't done this yet. I should try it. Uh, let's just do it out here. That's fine. Uh, if you do one there, then you have to do like this. Yeah, I can see. That works. I mean, that's that's nice. It's, it's in a stupid spot, so I'm not going to keep it. But you can do a 45 degree wall now, which I think is part of the Elixir mod pack as well. I think, but I could be wrong on that. Um, those are new things. That's a new feature of the game, even. The crane is interesting. That's a bit later in the game. Um, but the crane is interesting if you can get to that point. For sure. Wait a damn minute. Why did that not? Oh, that's why. Because it just made that one after I clicked. Uh, there. And that'll give me um, that'll give me most of my wall. And we'll do this here. Let's switch to windows here. One, two, three here. I'm just going to do a single window there, I think. Do a wall there, and we'll do a window here, maybe. Uh, wall. I'm going to switch to points, so I don't have to click twice. There, and there, and oopsie, oopsie, there. It's not exactly lined up because I hooked up to the wrong-ish spot. This is a wider, this is the wider room, that's the narrower room. Um, I made, or no, this, this is even wider than the other one. I made this a narrower room, which is fine. Uh, so we're going to need to have 5 times 5, so 25 more blocks to to do the roof. I have six right now and nine more on the on the make, so I need to make some more. I still have a lot of logs left over, though, so I can make a bunch more. Um, I'll just go ahead and make the 20, though, that we need. I can always make them later as I need them. Yeah, I definitely should have made more. Because I needed, I needed uh, 25 for the floor, 25 for the roof, and then, like, what is that? One, two, three, four times three, three times three, and then almost four times three again, so 12, 12, oh, the corners, too, I forgot about the corners, so that's five times three, 12, 12, 15, and 50, whatever that ends up being, don't do uh, math on stream, folks, about 90 to, to do this, because that wall was already there, um, so yeah, it's, it's some work, but it's, it's fine. So I do want to pick up and move this bedroom furniture and put my uh, kitchen furniture up here instead. Um, we'll do that as soon as I get this done. Get it done. One more. There we go. I'll take the 15. Uh, switch to just the generic automatic, automatic roofs and back to the line fill type. Stop pushing me around. Little little critter, and uh, just do that, and spread the roof, joy. And then I need ten more. I like too that they added the filters here, so you can say I want hewn. And it'll find just the stockpiles or stockpiles that have the hewn in them, and then even filter out the other items here, so you can just see the 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 
the tiles or the, the, the storage slots that have that specific item. So if you're looking for something specific, like I could even do like chard, if I want to just see all the chard foods that I have, or um, can you do like, just do food? Yeah, it'll show you all the, all the stuff that matches the food tag. But it, it has to be the whole tag. Whereas, like, if I just do char, I'll still see all the charred food because it's matching on a partial. But with the tags, it has to be the full exact tag. So I could even do, um, was it cooked food? No, was, is there a tag on the cooked food? No. Okay. Surprised there's not a, a tag for cooked food versus raw food. Because uh, there is a tag for raw food, but there's not a tag for cooked food. Bizarre. Sometimes the game is weird. Uh, let's eat. Chemist bulbs are okay for me. And uh, beans are good. So I'm going to eat some of those and some of those. Needed 10 more hewn. If you shift click on, a, on an item, you can select uh, 1, 5, or 10 and then drag to have multiples of that many. Uh, so if I put it on 5, I can get 5 or 10. If I put it on 10, I can only get 10 because there's only 13. Uh, that's all I want is 10. And then you just click on the icon and it pulls those into your inventory just like that. Like magic. There we go. So now this is a room. Uh, you can see down here, my, my fat head's not blocking this, is it? No, okay, good. Uh, down here, it tells you where you are, uh, what the deed you're on, what property you're on, Wally's home, a deed created by me, owner, me. Land is 500 square meters. Uh, each each block on the ground, by the way, is, is one square meter. And, uh, um, and it has a residence value of 9.33 XP per day right now. I'm authorized on it, of course. Well, I created it, so of course. And this is an uncategorized room category that wasn't redundant uh, and categorized rooms can exist on property types residence and cultural they can get support from other furnishing types decoration and light uh, lighting but they cannot uncategorized furniture cannot provide points in other room categories oh so you can have an uncategorized room Ontario um, it appears if you just put a decoration in it I don't have just a decoration, I don't think. Decoration and lighting. It's just decoration and lighting, though, not furniture of any kind. So, like, the bed was a bed or whatever. Uh, um, bedroom furniture type is nightstand. This one is... Ah, I'm sleeping. Don't sleep. Uh, this one is bedroom type bed. It says it should, but I, I'm sitting. Quit sitting. Stop sitting. I need to look at the thing. There we go. Examine. Seating is the category. Um, bathroom is the category with uh, the, the type of toilet. This is bathroom type of washing. And then this was uh, seating type of chair. So, um, I don't know. I I don't know what it is, Ontario. I'm just reading, and I, it's just what it says. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. So, salt basket... Um, gives you points in the kitchen category. Uh, if I had looked at it beforehand, kitchen, and it's a furniture type of spices. And then I also have this other, uh, which is a, an ice box, and it is a large storage, but it also counts as uh, a kitchen food storage. And I think the ice box doesn't actually help preserve the food longer. Um, itself, but there's fridges and stuff that are powered later that do help preserve the food value. I don't think the icebox does. I could be wrong on that, uh, but there are buildings later that do, or, or uh, furniture later that does. And then I'm going to move my bed back here. Um, make sure I don't break the hitbox there. There we are. And then... Oh, oh, it does. Icebox does. Well, then I should put my food in there instead. And I'll put the nightstand in here. And so now I have three rooms in my pie. Uh... Plus three for the kitchen, plus 5.33 for the bedroom, plus four for the bathroom. Okay, so then I should change... I should change my fires to output first to the uh, icebox. And then they can go into this, this other storage that I have here. And um, I want to make sure that... 
this is linked to the ice box, which it is, and it's not anywhere near the top, so that new food goes into the other storages. Um, and then I can come in here and I can pull in some, some food into this for longer preservation. Probably the stuff that's getting lower, actually, so maybe I don't want those particular items in here, because they're still pretty high. But if I look at the bars here, like this one is pretty low, this one's very low, uh, this one here, that one there. Just kind of looking at these bars to see how much life they have on them, the bars on the bottom. Uh, and moving the, the worst ones in there first. Uh, then this one's probably next. I could move some of the raws in here too, which actually not, may not be a bad idea. Um, because some of them are getting kind of low too, like corn. Actually, the, maybe I shouldn't put the, uh, the uh, uh, fires to outputting into here because um, I want this to preserve the stuff the longest. Mushrooms, they can die, I don't care. Uh, let's see, these fiddleheads. Um, tomatoes, I don't care about. Those I don't care about as much, at least for right now. Although I'm kind of getting there, so camas bulbs can go in there. Maybe I'll just do pumpkins and tomatoes. Oh, uh, let's merge those. That'll increase the average a little bit. And there we go. Uh, let's not put these in here, just those, and then I can put these in here as well. So that way my weakest stuff is in here, which gives them the 20% uh, that Ontario said it actually does uh, reduce it by. I do have some charred sausage, Ontario. Come and get it. Uh, so let's put this back down maybe here. Is it the second spot that the, the campfire's output to instead of the first? That way the fresh, the freshly made food goes into the, uh, into the non-preserved storage for now. But it wouldn't hurt me to get a couple more of these ice boxes uh, and have them here to, to store the food in instead of using these, uh, these, uh, whatchamacallit, these crates. What happened? I thought I had the raw roasts. Are they out of reach from... Did I miscount raw roast? I might have. I thought I had 40. I guess I only had 20. Or did I mistype something? I might have mistyped something. Well, I've got a bunch of raw roasts queued up for the next time somebody sells me them. I do, I'm taking 40. And so here I'm setting uh, the minimum freshness of the item that I want to buy, and then the maximum freshness that I want to buy. And the same thing on the sales side, um, if things go down below 50%, I actually don't sell them anymore. I could lower that so that uh, so that these items were available for sale um, because right now they're going to get to 50% pretty soon and then nobody's going to be able to buy them. So I should probably lower this down to like 25. Uh, that way they're actually saleable. I wish you could kind of set this globally, but... Oh no, that's not, sorry, that's not what that is. But that's fine, I, sh I should lower these down anyway. Because they're good for like three days uh, in-game. Um without spoiling even outside of a regular storage uh or outside of a, a, a food storage i should say and so um at 25 percent, they should be good for what's that about 20 hours or something which depending on when you come over and buy something you know maybe that's good enough so um Oops. Okay. I have uh, charred meat, charred sausage, and Unless somebody bought them all, campfire roasts. What else do I have? Uh, you have campfire roasts. I have meaty stew. Lots of goodies. 
Um, so I was th also thinking about switching this doorway so that it doesn't matter. You, 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 the bathroom was accessible only from the bedroom, but I think that's fine. I think it's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter functionally, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, so I could chop down some more trees. I don't really need to. I don't really need to gather that much wood. Um, so really, the thing about being a cook is it doesn't require a whole lot of playtime. Um, because all you're doing is setting up these recipes to cook something, and then you can kind of, you know, go and, you know, even log off. And I did that on purpose because I didn't know how much time I was going to have to devote this time. And it takes a lot of time to do certain other professions, um, especially, especially mining. Like, you can spend hours and hours and hours digging a hole in the ground uh, and not really get anywhere. Um... Logging can take some time too, but it's not as bad as mining is. Uh, that is. That tree is growing way the heck up here. Can we do this? Knock some leaves off so I can see where I'm going. Oh, we should uh, use the soil sampler. We should try that out. Show that off. I have sold out of charred meat. I got a little alert up there in the top right corner. Uh, if I If I puncture the soil at the base of the tree... It'll tell me how good the location is for that type of plant, whatever type of plant it is, including trees. Um, it will. Um, it'll. It'll tell me how it, how it matches in these four categories. Uh, there's enough space around the tree. The tree is 100% ma matures. So that means it'll yield 41 logs. That's not exactly true. Uh, the tree will yield 50 plus logs. I think I've gotten up to 54 out of um, out of a birch or a cedar. Um, different trees have different amounts, but 41, I don't know why they have 41 here, because anybody can get 50 out of these trees easily. Uh, so that's kind of a weird thing for me. And then some stats about the land itself in terms, and in including uh, pollution and nutrient uh, stuff here. And if we go and find a, a younger tree, maybe, if I can find a young one. This one younger? I think this one's younger. Uh, let's stab that and see. Yeah, maturity here is only 45%. So to tell you how much time uh, it takes until it's fully grown, um, trees take a long time to grow, obviously. Uh, since we're at less than half and we have, it's like 120 hours to grow a, to grow a cedar, which is, what, five days? Um, and the yield on the, on the logs also isn't correct here. Again, I don't know why... It shows what it is. This would probably give me about the 20 logs we got from that other tree. Um, I don't know why it says four. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but that's the way that it is. I don't know why, but that's the way that it is. Uh, so just for fun, though, we can chop down this tree, and I can show you how to get... Oh, six. I forgot. I just leveled up. Uh, six swings of a stone pickaxe at the level I'm at, which is level four. We'll chop down a birch or a cedar, which are the trees that are most prolific in the area that I'm in. This is all that wood pulp that I had earlier. Um, clean it up, otherwise you'll get yelled at on our servers. Um, if we if we see it, uh, it causes... Um, it used to cause um, lag. Uh, if you had too much of that kind of stuff laying on the ground, it doesn't so much anymore. But it's just messy and it's it's not it's not nice. Um, so we we still kind of enforce that rule, but we don't really we don't really scout it, but we do enforce it when we see it. Uh, and then also clear your stumps. Uh, while you don't really get much for doing it, um, it does allow plants to regrow in the area, and that includes an additional tree. So that's why we get these little tiny trees randomly popping up, even though I didn't plant any seeds, because by clearing the uh, stump, it allows uh, the tree to kind of seed itself. And the stumps take just as many swings as the tree took. So it was seven swings to knock the tree down. It's seven swings to remove the stump. So you can start, you can chop the uh, the log, or the tree in any way you want. If you start from one end or the other, you kind of get the best yield. If you start from the bottom of the, st of the trunk, you can get 53 logs. And I'll show you how to do that one. Uh, chop two, three, four, five. To get five sets of five, these are all worth five, so four of them is 20. That's full uh, for here. 
And then the fifth one is five more. And then on the sixth one, chop twice. This will split into two sets of three, even though it would have been a five before. So you get a bonus log right there. Uh, seven and a half. This will be a three and a three. And that gives you, uh, that would have been a five otherwise. So you get a bonus log there. And then um, eight and a half. And then nine and 10, and these ones you can't split. So that, that eight and a half gives you three and three, and then uh, five and five, which gave me 16. So it was 20, and then 17, and then 16, which adds up to 53. Now, if I go to another tree, it can it doesn't have to be a, a, a cedar. It can be a birch, as long as it's full, uh, which it is, 100%. This one says 38. It's also lying. Um, we're going to chop this one down. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you, if you come up and kind of chest bump the tree a little bit, you might get a little bit of a control on which direction it falls. You have to time it just right and also be a little bit lucky. Clear all this stuff. I'm going to get my machete out here and get rid of these stupid things, too. Uh, these, this one here, too. There we go. Um, machete doesn't yield you anything, but it does clear those stupid... Whatever those are called. These fluffy... What are these things called? Uh, nope. Can't even tell where it's originating at. Button bush. They're annoying. Destroy them all. Uh, there's so many of them in the world, it doesn't matter. Let's see. So, six more on chops on his. And then now, if I start from the top of the tree, um, I see some more scrap down there. Chop and a half. That'll give me six. Then two and a half will give me six more. And then three and a half will give me six more. So we're at 18. And then four and a half will give me six more. Five doesn't split. Six doesn't split. Seven doesn't split, but I can't pick it up. So eight and 16. Eight doesn't split. And then nine doesn't split and neither does 10. So that gives me 20 more. 20, 16, and 18 is 54. So that works for cedars and birches. They have the same uh, yield profile, the same chop profile. So whenever you're chopping uh, um, cedars and birches, um, chop them in that pattern. Uh, do Start from the top of the, the, the trunk and then chop once half twice half three times half four times half and then five six seven eight nine to make the ten segments and you'll get 54 logs every time on a hundred percent growth tree um on cedars and birches on other trees the, the the chopping is different oaks i don't think you can really manipulate i think they give you the same amount no matter what but i don't i usually do when I do wood cutting, I usually do birches and cedars. I like their balance, their growth time versus their yield. Um, makes it makes it kind of uh, kind of a good a good number. Uh, some of the trees are ridiculous. Uh, let's see if there's any. There's none here. Those those big gnarly ones that are in the um, rainforest, the ceiba trees. They have they take a long time to cut. Oaks take a long time to cut. Uh, large number of swings, that is. Um, Joshua's and saguaros don't take very much to cut, uh, but they also don't yield very much. They might yield like 30 apiece, I think, even at fully grown. So I'm a beach and cedar kind of guy. So whenever I do logging, I always set up in, in a forest that has the beaches and the cedars. Because that's me. Uh, the wetlands don't have any trees natively. Uh, you'll find... You'll find oaks in some of the grasslands, uh, but also some beaches and cedars in there. Uh, we can actually just see also the uh, layers here for tree. Uh, you can see birches have a wide range of possibilities here, as do cedars, and they're basically the same. Actually, they're exactly the same. The cebas are those big gnarly ones that are found in the... Um, I will. I can't find some here. And in the, in the uh, rainforest... 
Uh, furs, of course, are in the cold forest. I don't remember the profile on those. Uh, Joshua's are in the some of the desert. They're in the high desert, I think. Oaks are kind of sparse on this world, which is kind of weird. Uh, really, right there around where Ontario Gardener is, is really the biggest oak yield area on this uh, on this map. Uh, old growth are in the cold forest as well. That's the that's the huge ones we saw at the beginning. Palms are in the desert. Oh, sorry, in, in the tropical stuff as well. Uh, palms aren't in the desert. And uh, redwoods are in the same as the fir and the old growth redwoods. Don't take on the old redwoods. Yeah, we talked about that at the beginning. Uh, so guar are in the desert. They're a little more prolific than the Joshua's are. Um, and then the spruce are also in that those colder biomes, but there aren't very many uh, spruce good spots here either. So if you want uh, spruce stuff, then you'll have to go and find some. So um, each each tree, just like each plant, has its own yield potential area, and it's tied into what the biomes look like. So we have your boreal forest, which doesn't actually show up ever on a map. I don't know what the heck. Cold forest is the area around the snowy mountains. Uh, ice is the is that cold area, and then there's also tundra which doesn't always show up either but there actually is one tiny little patch of tundra here which is actually in a lake um i don't think boreal forest shows up at all yeah it doesn't it's also called a taiga uh, but again it doesn't really show up on the map and then so there, then there's the cold forest and then there are the um then there's warm forest which is kind of where i'm in a little bit i'm kind of on the the border of a warm forest and a wetland here. Uh, the rainforest is this area down here, of course, and we saw some of the other areas where the palm trees and the sebas are. And then we have just generic forest doesn't show up either. I think that's a legacy thing, which boreal forest might be a legacy thing too from the older versions. Uh, cold forest we talked about. Deep ocean is, of course, the the, the deep parts of the ocean. Um, on a different map, oops, uh, deep ocean. It, you can see that it looks like uh, almost like like the Marianas Trench kind of thing. Like you can see that it's very deep there. Uh, the desert is, of course, the all the yellowy areas on the map, and then uh, grassland is the the bright green areas. Um, ocean is the ocean, the part of the ocean that's not the deep ocean, and then there's also the ocean coastline too that actually is a little bit different than the ocean itself in terms of its its profile of different things. But the game doesn't doesn't distinguish them here. And I think that's it for the for the biomes. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a handful of different biomes, but um, uh, and different things are found in different biomes. Different things are grown in different biomes, and different animals prefer different biomes. Although they're they'll go anywhere too. Like for example, the the bison here. You normally would see those in the grasslands, but it made its way up here, and the uh, the leopard or cheetah, whatever this is, is here. Um, but it would normally be in, uh, I think it would normally, maybe in the wetlands. Maybe that's why they're up here, because I'm so close to the wetlands. Um, but also they would be down in the uh, rainforest too, I think. So, yeah, it's, um, the game has come a long way. It's still got a lot, long way to go, I, I feel, but it's come a long way. I should pick this up too. And I should dump off my stuff that I picked up, uh, specifically this. And these the seeds we picked up that I probably should just get rid of. And I should really just take these plant seeds and uh, put them in a chest out here in front of my house. Uh, let's see, I put my chest away too, didn't I? And I'm just going to put it down over here. And I'm going to give authorization to everyone. And I'm just going to put all those seeds in here. And if anybody wants seeds, they can just come and get them for free.
What did I miss in the game chat? Oh yeah, you have to put, uh, they changed it in 9.0. You have to put water wheels in rivers now. They don't work in the oceans. So it has to be flowing water, uh, which is good because that's more logical as well. Um, but um, a lot of people don't realize that yet. So yeah, you have to put those in, in rivers. You can't just put them in the ocean. And you can't just make them up in the air spinning around magically either anymore. Um, Otherwise, yeah, you won't, uh, you won't, you won't have a good time with, with a water wheel unless you, unless you do that. All right. So, let's see. Libyan has them for sale. Um, but the game is really good about tagging things like names and, and rooms and things like that, which is really nice uh, because otherwise you can get lost and confused really easily. Uh, let's see. I want to make or I want to eat. Did Ontario buy all my charred sausage? Oh, no, he didn't. There it is. He bought, all the, bought all the charred meat, though. Oh, no, I don't want to eat that. That tastes bad. That's what I wanted to eat, was one of these. Don't eat things that taste bad, Wally. Do I have... I do have meat. I can make into more charred meat. All right, I'll do that. Charred meat. I have 35. 20 here. And 15 here. And that'll be good. What else do I need? Just to update here. Uh, the charred heart of palm. I do have some heart of palm. I could make some more charred heart of palm. Um, I happen to find it delicious, so maybe we could do that. We can make six more. Uh, let's see, what are we low on? Charred cactus, we don't have any cactus fruit, I don't think. No. Not any of that. I could charge more tomatoes, but nobody's eating them. So I think I'll wait. I should look at the uh, pricing on some more of those stews, though. That might be good. Yeah, let's price out some more stew. So, in addition to the meaty stew that we priced out... I wish you could search here. That'd be a nice feature to add. Um, there are four different types of stew. Five that I have already. Okay. Meaty fish. I'm not going to probably make fish because I don't have any fish to char uh, to make into that anyway, and it requires the fat anyway. Uh, field campfire, jungle, and root, and then eventually I'll get the wild stew. Field, jungle, and root. F... Uh, 0.9 corn, 0.9 tomatoes, 0.9 scrap meats, and 0.9 fats. So that's, let's see, calculator time. I'm paying 0.1 for all of those, for all of those. So 0.1 times 3 times 0.9. Uh, scrap, uh, scrap meat I'm paying 0.184 times 0.9. Plus, plus the fat, 0.7 times 0.9. Let's say 1.3 for, um, what was that one? 
field campfires do. We'll put that in the uh, store here. Field campfire stew. 1.3. Jungle. Campfire stew. Okay. 0 0.1 times 3 times 0 0.9 plus 0.18 times 0 0.9 plus 0.7 times 0.9. Oh, that one's also... Oh, yeah, because it wasn't that much different than... Wait a minute. Yeah, that one's also 1.3, because there's only one vegetable less. Uh, one fruit or vegetable less. No, wait. One, two, yeah. Only, only one vegetable less, so... One plant less. So, jungle will also be 1.3. And then, uh, last one was Root Campfires too. One and one. Okay, that's gonna be the same price as the last one. That's easy enough. Same exact uh, ingredient profile. Nope, not that one. This one right here. Something finished up. Did you run out of fuel? You ran out of fuel. Uh, there's a lot of things you can use for fuel in the game. One of those is this um, wood pulp, but it only has 50 joules of energy, so it doesn't last very long. Uh, this will burn... Uh, will burn at 10 watts when operating, which is 10 joules per second. So one uh, plant, one wood pulp will last you for 5 seconds. So a whole stack will last you for 500 seconds, which is... What? Le less than 10 minutes? So don't don't use wood pulp. Use use logs instead. Although I go here there. Uh, Twenty uh, uh, one log will give you four thousand joules. So uh, that lasts a little bit longer. Where's my other campfire at? I have eight still in there. Let's go ahead and top that off too. I think. Let's throw this other stack of eight in there. Uh, that way we can last a little bit longer. But yeah, uh, logs have four thousand joules a piece. So, they last a bit longer in the fire. Um, so keep that in mind, too. Because that's what? Uh, 400 seconds per log? That's a little more than 10 minutes? No, it's a little more than... Don't do math on stream, folks. A little more than 6 minutes. Almost 7 minutes per log. Of cooking time. So, like, right now we're, we're cooking... Uh, this charred meat... It has two minutes left on it, and then we have the, the charred heart of palm after that, so we're not even going to use one log between the rest, what's left of that. Um, and then finally there's the wild stew, which I already did uh, the pricing on, but I can't make it yet because uh, we're not cooking six yet. It's going to be a while. It's going to take me 31,250 experience points to get to the next level, to get to level six. Uh, cooking, uh, I don't know, just at random, this charred meat, for example. Uh, if I scroll up to it, it's going to give me... Let's go over here. You can see it faster, I think. No, I guess not. Um, come on. Do, do, do. Charred meat is uh, 30.74 experience, which isn't very helpful. Um, but it's if you look at this number... And you compare it to this number right here, you can see that it's half of this number. So basically, I get a half of a half of whatever my current uh, XP is per crafting of, tra of, of charred meat. So I made 35. That means I get 35 times half of 61 and a half, which was it was 30.74 is actually what it was uh, times 35. I get just over a thousand experience for all that charred meat that I set up. And we need uh, 32,000, where's it at, right here, to go from level 5 to level 6. I mean, we're already 7,000 of the way through it, but, uh, yeah, we need a lot of, we need to do a lot of cooking to get to there. But I don't want to cook too much, because I don't want the food to spoil. So, uh, 
in the old days, you could just cook like a crazy fool and just have a bunch of stuff stockpiled and, and not have to worry about it. But now, with the spoilage, I'm not going to do it. But I also just noticed the time, and we are nearing the end of our stream. So, oh, that was, oops, sorry about that. So, um, I will be streaming uh, Eco some more. Um, I did a lot of, like, explanation on how the game works and stuff today. Um, it will probably depend on what I have to do, because, like I said, um, I just, there's not a lot to do as a cook. Like, there's not a bunch of mining to do, even a bunch of crafting. It's kind of just set it and forget it. So there's there's not a lot of activity that I can do, but I think, you know, every so often I will definitely uh, hop on here and do this. Even if we only stream Eco for like 20 or 30 minutes as part of a stream and then we switch games or something, we could always do that. Um, I will uh, leave that up to your to your opinions. If you want to tell me what you think, then um, we can, uh, you know, I can I can stream more Eco for sure. If it's something that's interesting to you guys as viewers, uh, the viewers count's been pretty good today so that's kind of that's uh, nice to see but we're going to set up a raid stick around for the raid uh at least through the raiding activity itself uh, that way you get counted as part of the raid which makes um which makes you know my channel look good uh because we are raiding with a larger group but also um it gives you some extra channel points if you would like to spend those on different redeems so stick around for that raid if you don't mind and we will um and we'll be raiding mr taco it is taco tuesday uh, he is a charity streamer, uh, not that you need to donate to his charity, but that his, uh, everything he makes, whether that's from streams or bits or from subs or bits or whatever, um, all goes to, to extra life charity. So it's kind of a, a nice thing that he's doing there. Um, so let's go ahead and set that rate up. Uh, thanks everyone for coming and hanging out with me. Thanks for, uh, asking questions in the chat and thanks for those of you who are playing the game right now with me for coming to the stream and chatting in the, in the stream chat as well. I appreciate that. So let's, um, let's do the raid. We'll be back again on Thursday with captain of industry. I think, um, I, like I said, I want to work on that when I get that finished. So, um, uh, or get to the end game and that so we're gonna definitely be spending some time on captain of industry still uh we'll do that that'll be probably a um a, you know the usual short stream on thursdays friday night is community game night in discord if you'd like to join then uh you know come to my discord um and uh, watch for the poll and for um and then for the for the you know the the event on friday nights during what we normally be the stream time uh, the poll goes up earlier in the day sometime. And then Saturday again here on stream, probably also Captain of Industry. But if I have something interesting slash major to do, uh, we can at least do some eco for part of it and then switch games. And then Sunday will be, I'm not sure, because Sunday is going to, is Christmas. So I don't know if we're going to stream or not on Sunday. Um, if we're not going to do Dinkum, I probably won't stream. Um, but we'll see. I'll, I'll let you all know for sure on Saturday. So, uh, so stop you know keep an eye on the channel stop by and uh, we'll see you all again on thursday have a good night everyone bye for now